Good morning, everybody, and happy to be back again this morning at the tabernacle to pray for the sick people today. It's usually uh, we try to get in ever so often and, and pray for the people who come in from the different places for prayer. And now we'll be leaving pretty soon now for the California and West Coast meetings, and we sure uh, solicit your prayers that God of heaven will be merciful to us there and give us a great service. Just got in yesterday, or last night rather, late, and yesterday was one of the, well, day before yesterday and yesterday was one of the great red-letter days of my life. There I know is at least two people or three in the building who is witness of the coming down of the Lord yesterday and a great wonderful thing taking place, which I haven't got the time this morning to tell you, but maybe next Sunday morning before we leave, I maybe have time in the message to, to tell you. If the Lord is willing, I'll be down at least to pray for the sick Sunday morning. We want to leave about noon, if possible, for the San Jose meeting in San Jose, California. And if you have any people around on the West Coast there that we believe is going to be maybe the hour that I have looked for so long, the change in my ministry coming. And it's so close. I thought it was going to happen yesterday, and uh, I believe that it will be right away now, and it'll be far beyond anything that we've ever seen or heard yet. I remember that, thus saith the Lord. See? And so we're just expecting it any time. And we're to have the meeting now at the fairgrounds, I believe that's right, isn't it, Gene? At the fairgrounds at the San Jose, California. And it'll be a 10 days meeting beginning the 20th to the 29th uh, at San Jose. Now, just be remembering us and praying for us. Now, we have about, if we get out in time, about one and a half hours now that we're going to uh, start our services for praying for the sick and bringing the word. Now, I have chosen this morning... Uh, small passage of Scripture, two places in the Bible, to speak on. But before we speak, let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Most gracious God, we humbly approach thy throne of grace this morning as unworthy children. But coming with an unadulterated faith in God that was given to us by the Holy Spirit and His ever presence with us, and through a promise by the Lord Jesus that if we would come humbly and would ask anything in His name, we would be granted our petition. Therefore, we do not look back upon our merits because we do not have any such. But we look back to the merits of Calvary where our grace was given to us freely by the Son of God. And we can hardly choke back the tears that would run down our throats when we think of we the unworthy people and how that by His grace there at Calvary He did that for us, that we might be brought so close to God even to relationship. And now we are sons and daughters to Him. And we come this morning, Lord, under this little roof to dedicate ourselves and for service confessing our sins. And, and in divine worship, we trust that you will be with us and give us a spiritual insight of thy close 
coming that we might prepare our hearts daily for that great event that's been looked for for thousands of years. Truly all nature is groaning, crying to be released. And our spirits within us, Lord, are constantly confessing that we are pilgrims and strangers and this is not our home. But we seek a city whose builder and maker is God. We look for that great time to come. Lord, we would be mindful that these meetings, when we gather here, we pray for your children that are sick and afflicted. And we ask that you meet with us today in a very special way to heal all the sickness and diseases among us. And it may be, Lord, that this promise that I've just been previously speaking of in the meeting with you there yesterday, right after daylight, and how that you confirmed it over and over again. We feel that the hour is very close. And may this be the day, Lord, that it'll happen. That you will change the ministry, Lord, into something that will be more gracious to thy people. And now, Father God, we would not only pray for these here, but for those stretched out across the world that are needy both spiritually and physically. Give to them, O Lord, the desires of their hearts because thy children are struggling in these days. The oppression of the enemy is so strong. But thou art stronger. For it is written, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. By this we overcome. Speak to us through thy written word. And when we leave this morning, may we say like those that went from Emmaus, uh, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way. We ask it in Jesus' name who gave the promise. Amen. I am reading now from two places in the book of Genesis. One of them is found in the 24th chapter, beginning with the 56th verse. Reads like this. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they s- sent Rebecca away with her sister, their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servant. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And in Genesis 22, 15th verse we read, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, 
By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, thou hast not with, withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his words. Now, I would like to take, if it should be called a text, my subject this morning first is testing before promised gate. And the subject is possessing the enemy's gates. God had been testing the patriarch because he had given him a promise. And when God makes a promise, he wants to be sure that this person is worthy of the promise before he fulfills what he said or what he promises. So Abraham had been promised that through his seed, the whole world would be blessed, that he'd have a son, and this son out of him should come forth a seed that would bless the whole earth. And Abraham, when the promise was given to him, was 75 years old. And Sarah, his wife, was 65 years old. But the Bible tells us that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God. And God time after time tested him. But he had come to that final test before the blessing was going to happen. And that's the way it is with all the seed of Abraham. God gives us that final test just before he gives the promise. And if it was possible, I'd like to say something here personally, but I'll withhold that. That final test to see how you'll react upon it. And when he gave Abraham this test, he found Abraham just as true as he was when he started what a blessing it would be this morning if we who take his promise of healing would stand just as true as we did when we stood here and accepted it, no matter what the doctor said. Stand just as true. And when he did this and never withheld his only son, but was about to plunge the knife into Isaac's bosom to destroy his testimony. He had testified all over the known earth that he was acquainted with, that he was going to have this son. And then when the son came, he was asked to double back and to destroy the only hope that he had for his testimony to be fulfilled. When God seen that he was loyal to that faith that he had in God, God looked out of the heavens and he said, I've sworn by myself that I'll bless you and multiply you and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Amen. What a promise. 
and Rebecca, which was to be the mother of this noted, promised, waited son, when she was called to the final test of a strange man that she had never seen before, only she seen the working of the Holy Spirit. And when her parents could not fully decide whether she should go with this stranger or not, to be the wife of a man that she had never seen, she was brought to the final test. We'll get the damsel and let her speak. We'll hear from her mouth whether she will go yes or no. That's the way it's brought to all the seed of God. It's got to be your mouth. God wants to hear from you. So when she was put to the test, she never hesitated a minute. She said, I will go. I like that. Not let me make up my mind. Let me study it over. She was fully persuaded. That's the people that God can use. When you're fully persuaded that God will keep His promise, that I'll go. And her people then, so anointed, maybe did not know it, but they prophesied as they laid their hands upon their sister and their daughter, this beautiful young Jewish girl, as they placed her up on the camel and sent her to a strange land among strange people. But they were something on them. They said, let thy seed possess the gate of their enemy. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And today that race of people and the people of God is strolled from sea to sea around the world. Amen. In that resurrection, they'll be like the stars of heaven as them bright lights take their position as they go through the sky. Hallelujah. And when they come, they'll be like the seas by the, or the sands by the seashore. Hallelujah. There will be thousands of millions. Thy seed shall possess the gate of its enemy. That's God's sworn promise. The seed of Abraham. And then by his Holy Spirit, seeing that the mother was to be part of the son also, because they are part of the flesh. Then the Holy Spirit, working through these people, said, He let your seed possess the gate of the enemy. Then God swearing he had possessed the gate of the enemy. Then what position does that put the church of the living God? We are Abraham's seed. For we being dead in Christ, we are take on Abraham's seed and are heir with him under the same sworn promise. We are Abraham's seed and are heirs of every promise that was given him. But when the testings come, that's where we fail. But I don't believe that the true seed of Abraham will fail. They'll stand just as gallant and loyal as Abraham did. Now we see that God cannot say anything or, or make any promise unless He will fulfill it. He has to do that in order to be God. Amen. Years later, when this same people, the promised 
people, the seed of Abraham, was on their journey going into a, a promised land. There was a gate who stood and up against him. And it was his own brother, Moab, who said, You'll not cross my land. I'll see to it that you'll not cross my land. He said, If our cows lick up any of your grass, or if they drink any of your water, we'll pay you for it. But he said, You'll not cross this land. But God's promise held true. So they went and got their prophet, Balaam, and brought him down to curse the people. And here's what he said. They tried to show him the worst part of the blessed seed. But God showed him the best part of it. He said, Ever who curses Israel will be cursed, and whoever blesses him will be blessed. And the bars was let down and Israel crossed the plains. God promised he will possess the gate of his enemy. Later on in the years, there came one by the name of Daniel, who was in the line of this loyal seed and in the line of the promises because he was the seed of Abraham. God had chosen him before the foundation of the world to be his prophet. And he lived gallant and he lived loyal. And even in a strange land, he purposed in his heart, I'll not defile myself with him. That's the real seed of Abraham. Living in a land that's different. Living among people who are different, but yet gallant to that promise. I'll not defile myself with them. I'll stay true. God put him to a test as he did his father Abraham. And the king said, you'll either be like one of us and worship the way we worship, or I'll throw you into a den full of hungry lions. Daniel, like Abraham, his father, said, you may throw me into the lion's den, but I'll not bow to any of your images. I'll not take your formal religion. I'll stay true to Jehovah. And there came the showdown then. The king kept his promise. And he picked up the prophet. Or had him taken up and thrown him to the lion's den. And when the lions, the enemy of Daniel, rushed forth to the prophet, God kept his promise. Amen. He possessed the gate of his enemy. God stood an angel there before those lines and took the gate. God keeps his promise. He shall possess the gate of his enemy. God said so. And there were three more down there who had pledged their self loyal to the cause, who were truly Abraham's seed. And that was Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. And they were put to the test. And they said, if you do not bow when you hear the harps are playing and the trumpets are sounding, if you do not bow to our religion and get away from them things that you are standing for, and you're all wet anyhow, your religion is no more than anybody else's. Don't we hear that all the time? Yes, amen. But the, the religion of Jesus Christ is different. Amen. The power of 
of His resurrection is different. We are a different people, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. God makes the difference. But when they said, you'll have to become one of us, it would have been all right with Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego if they want to become one of them. But never would they become one of the aliens. Now they said, if you don't do it, we've got a door out here to a furnace that we can open up and throw you into it and you'll wish you would have become one of us. They remember the promise. They marched them right down to the fiery furnace and when they opened the door and threw them into the flames, their enemy that would have consumed them, they possessed the gates of their enemy. God sent His Son into those flames of fire and cool the breezes and talk with them while they were in there. God's promise held true. Amen. They possessed the gate of the enemy. Tested first. Then they possessed the gate of the Amen. enemy. Was it not Jesus who made the promise? If you even bring a fence to one of these little ones, it was better for you that a millstone was hanged at your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea. Don't even bring an offense to these little ones that believe in me. And these signs shall follow them that believe in Amen. me. Hallelujah. He made a difference. He made a showing of what did believe and what did not believe. There are always the three crowds of people. That is the unbeliever, the make-believer, and the believer. But God has a way of proving who is a believer. Amen. That believer stands firm on what God says to be the truth. Yes. It was Elijah, the Tishbite. When he come to a showdown, he thought... He was the only one in the nation who was still living for God. And the king was going to put him under a trial. And they persecuted him. And that little painted up queen by the name of Jezebel threatened his life. And when it comes to the showdown, Elijah possessed the gates of his enemy. Turn the whole nation back to God again. God keeps His promise. It was Moses. After being also in the line of this royal seed. The seed of Abraham. That when he was sent down into Egypt. To deliver the children of Israel. And God had given him signs and wonders to perform. And to smite the earth and to bring forth frogs and fleas and darkness and hail and rain and fire, and had done all these miracles. Yet when he led them out by the hand of Jehovah, there come a time when he met the gate between him and the promised land. There was the Red Sea, a bar across the way. They were hemmed in by Pharaoh's army, mountains and deserts and the Red Sea. But Moses stepped forward and possessed the gate of his enemy and crossed the Red Sea, dry shod, as is walking on a dusty road. He shall possess the gate of the enemy. God said so, and that settles it. Amen. A little a few years later, when the trials come and the church got all shook up, as it's so easy for a congregation of people to do when something just don't seem to happen the way that it's supposed to be. God makes it that way. Amen. God brings tension.
nations and to the church. For every son that cometh to God must be tried and proven and tested. He lets sickness strike you. He lets diseases come on you to test you and to prove you. To show the world that you're truly the seed of Abraham. He permits it by his own will. He permits disasters. He permits the friends to turn against you. He permits all these things and turns the devil loose to tempt you. And he will do all but take your life. He could throw you on a bed of affliction. He could turn your neighbors against you. He could turn the church against you. He could do most anything. And it's God's will for him to do it. We are taught that it is more precious than gold to us. What about Abraham with Isaac on the mountain? The one the promise is given and by his loyalty and his knowing and his faith in Jehovah. It's through that and that alone that God looked down and said, His seed shall possess the gates. I swore by myself that I'll do these things. No one greater he could swear by but he swore by himself. Then if he let Abraham be tested to that final point, he's got to test you and me to that final moment. Amen. That time of decision when everything's away from you. You have to stand alone there. Hallelujah. That's it. Stand alone Walk out there and say, though he slay me, yet I'll trust him. That's the seed of Abraham. That's the one that gives the promise. No matter what the rest of them says, the rest of them do. For me and my house, we'll serve God, said they. If the rest of them says he's nothing to the experience, it's a bunch of excitement. For me and my house, we'll serve God. I like to take up with Paul right here and say, in the way that's called heresy, so worship I the God of our fathers. Amen. Though they be tatters come in the church, though they be twisters, and though they be all kinds of false prophets, and everything come into the church amongst the people in, in the neighborhood and everything, but for me Amen. and for my house, Hallelujah. we'll serve the Lord. Though all of them quit coming and though the church gets cold and different, me and my house will serve the Lord. Though someone was prayed for and didn't get well, that has nothing to do with it. For me and my house, we serve the Lord. The testings and the trials. Men are not infallible, but God is. Man, you get your mind on a man, he'll make a mistake. Maybe not willfully, but he'll do it. God permits him to do it so that he can shake your faith away from man. Our faith is not in the wisdom of man, but in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's where the true seed of Abraham rests their promise. Because they can only be the seed of Abraham when they receive the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, they're not the seed of Abraham. That same faith that was in Abraham comes into the believer. No matter what takes place or how contrary, the believer marches right on. Amen. The spies returned back and said, Oh, it's, it's foolishness to try. There's no need of going any further because that people is such giants over there. And they've got great governments and they, they've got spears and while we even look like grasshoppers up the side of them. I don't know, but I'm persuaded to believe here that Joshua was just a little bitty runt. Just a little bitty tiny fellow. I can see him jump up on in some kind of a box and said, man and brethren to two million people, we are more than able to take them. Amen. Why? That was the seed of Abraham. God gave 
is a promise. Amen. That was their possession. God gave the promise. No matter what the opposition was, the yeah. true seed of Abraham said, we can take it because God gave it to us. There you stand this morning. There stands the church of the living God. I don't care what anyone else says, Amen. what the doctor says, what anything, what the unbeliever says. We can more than a match for anything that comes Amen. along. We are Abraham's seed and we shall possess the gate of our enemy. No matter what the enemy is. God gave the promise that was theirs. Their possession. Healing's your possession. Salvation's your possession. The Holy Ghost is your possession. And there's great thousands of preachers and so forth in the land today that says that's not so. But the seed of Abraham knows it's so. They wait right in and possess the gates of the enemy. God said they would. They believe it because it's a promise. His seed shall possess the gate of the enemy. Hallelujah. Now you'll go through testings, trials. And Joshua stood there loyal. The little fellow said, I don't care how big they are. I don't care what kind of a spear they got. How high their cities is walled and how great it is. Our promise is that the gate will be possessed by the seed of God's children. And we're going over to take them. We're more than a match for them. Oh, that's the true seed. A lot of them that was born natural seed said, we just can't do it. There's no need of trying. Then we are outnumbered. We're outclassed. We're everything. He, they were looking at the, what the eye saw. And Joshua was looking what God said. Amen. The seed of Abraham doesn't look to any of the natural things. They look to what the Lord said. That's the promise. What if Abraham would have looked to the natural? At a woman a hundred years old. Ninety she was. And he was a hundred. And had lived with her since she was a little girl. And he was a little boy. And no seed. He didn't look at those things. He said he counted those things as if they were not. But he only looked to what God said. I'll bless you, Abraham, and I'll give you seed by Sarah. And he believed it. Hallelujah. We don't look at the opposition. We look at what God said. God said it. That settles it. So then when he come down to the Jordan, when Joshua was made the commander-in-chief of the army, and they come down to the very edge of the water, and could look across and see Jericho. But between them, when Joshua had his army ready, there was a gate. That gate was called Jordan. But the promise of God is good at every gate. No matter what gate it is, God's promise is good. He shall possess the gates of his enemy. That settles it. When he come down to the Jordan that morning, perhaps I would have believed that the devil had storm clouds hanging everywhere. The big old muddy waters are rolling down. The fields were swept across by a flood. Oh, what a tempting time. But Joshua said, get ready, you're going to see the glory of God. And they sanctified themselves and got ready. Making ready when everything seemed to be contrary. But that was the seed of Abraham who God swore out giving the gate. Come to the Jordan, that was his gate. And he possessed it. Some of these mornings I got to come down to that last gate too. You got to come down to the Jordan. But the seed of Abraham shall possess the gate. No matter what it is, he'll possess the gate of every enemy. All those men were great men. They died in the line. But finally one day in Bethlehem of Judea, the royal seed was born. 
which all the rest of them were just shadows. The royal seat was born not of a man, but he was born by a virgin to, with the power in his veins to conquer death and hell. Amen. God made a promise. An ordinary man couldn't do it. But if God makes a promise, he's just the same God that he was a few minutes before with Abraham, Jehovah, Jireh. The Lord shall provide the way to take the gate. How are we going to do it? Joshua died, Moses died, the rest of them died. But God said he shall possess the gate of his enemy. How is he going to possess death? He's got a way of doing things. Amen. He shall possess the gate of his enemy. Yeah, the royal seed was born. He was tempted in every manner like we are. <laughs> Just as you have to be tempted, so was he. The devil quickly take him when he received the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days and nights to be tempted. Yeah. And when he come out, and at his death they drove nails in his hand and spit in his face. He went through every sickness. But when he was here on earth, he proved that he could conquer sickness. When Peter's wife's mother laid sick of a palsy, he touched her hand. And the fever left her. Amen. When the leper cried at the gate, unclean, unclean. If you will, you can make me whole. He said, I will be thou whole. Amen. He conquered and tucked the gate of leprosy. Thank the he tucked the gate of fevers. He made ever nature obey him. He was a seed of Abraham. The royal seed, the one the promise was given to. Amen. To him, Abraham, and all the seed that followed him up to the royal seed and all the seed after him. Yeah. God's yeah. promise is true. He conquered sickness. He conquered temptation. When the enemy spit in his face, smote his jaw, he turned the other side. When the jerk Amen. veered from his face and spit on him, he never riled back. He conquered the gate of temptation and took it. Then you say, my temper won't let me do it. You see of Abraham. Yes, sir. He conquered it for you. When he was riled upon, he riled not back. When he was made fun of, he held his peace. When he was called a devil, he held his peace. He had one business, and that's the father's business. And he went about doing that. Then finally they took him to a cross. Death had to face him. All the rest of them had conquered seas, and they had conquered nature, and they had conquered lions, and they had conquered fire. They had conquered everything but death. But here was one beating in his brain, his veins, and there the conquering power of death. So they took his hands and stretched him out and nailed him to a cross. They beat him and they striped him till his bones stared at him. But when he did, then they'd done all that they could do. Death struck him. So now I'll take you like I did Joshua. I'll take you like I did Daniel. And I'll do all this because I'll make you die. And he died till the sun got ashamed of itself. He died until nature got ashamed and it failed to operate. The sun went out in the middle of the day and the stars wouldn't come out. He died until the elements were so black you couldn't see your hand before you in the middle of the day. I'd imagine nature said, let me die with him. Brother, then the devil sent his precious soul into the bottomless pits of hell. There the gates opened. But he come out on the third day, conquered it. Amen. His seed shall possess the gate of the enemy. Hallelujah. Conquered death, he conquered hell. On that first Easter morning, he conquered the grave. Hallelujah. Now we stand more than conquerors through him. Who loved us. On the day of Pentecost, he set down the Holy Ghost. To continue through the Gentiles to take out a seed of promise. 
to give to the Gentiles the offcast. To give to them the baptism of the Holy Ghost to bring them into the promise. Now we have a right to conquer all sickness. We don't have to conquer it. It's already conquered. We just have to claim the promise and go take it. It's already conquered. Death's conquered. Hell's conquered. Sickness is conquered. Temptation's conquered. All devils is conquered. Hell's conquered. Death's conquered. The grave's conquered. We stand in the gate taking it. Don't have to fire a shot. It's already been paid for. His enemy, he'll possess Amen. the gate of his enemy. How many thousands of millions? He'll possess the gate of his enemy. Yeah. Every enemy. He rose from the dead. We possess it because he gave it to us. It's all a free gift. Besides all that, and everything that he has done and conquered every gate, he conquered sickness, took the gate. Only thing we have to do is walk up to the gate and say, In the name of Jesus Christ, to conquer. Amen. Amen. When it comes time to die, and death said, Watch me make him take back his religion. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth rolled back Jordan. Amen. The seed of Abraham takes the gate. What Paul said when they was fixed to cut his head off, a seed of Abraham, he said, Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He shall possess the gate of his enemy. Take it. Now, he is not better at the gate. He will conquer it and take it. He'll possess it. That's in his own power. In the church of the living God this morning lays the power to heal all sickness. Amen. In the church of the living God lays power to overcome all temptation. Amen. In the possession of the church of the living God this morning lays the power to change sin and throw it away and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the church of Jesus Christ, whatsoever you desire, ask in my name and it shall be given to you. A little while in the world, the not seed, the unregenerated seed, will see me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. What? The royal seed. The works that I do shall you do also. I'll verify myself that I'm with you, for these signs shall follow them that believe. He shall possess the seed of his enemy. He shall possess, his seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. No matter what the gate is, if it's sickness, temptation, sin, whatever gate it is, it's conquered. And the seed of Abraham possess it. Aren't you happy this morning to know that we stand now more than a conqueror? More than a conqueror. Oh, there's nothing to fight about. The fight's over. The whistle's blown. The flag's rose. And in the midst of every sin pile, every Amen. midst of every sick room, is the old rugged cross planted by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, a conqueror. The only thing we do is believe, look, and live. Amen. I'll be with you. I'll prove. People come in the last days and say, oh, well, that was. But I'll be with you in the very things I did here on earth. I'll be in you doing the very same things. Amen. Then they'll know. They'll see me. The, my people will see me. The seed of Abraham will see me. They'll know me. They'll recognize me. The others will call me Beelzebub, just like they have done. But you shall know me, for I'll be with you. You'll see me. See with your eyes. You'll see me, for I'll be with you even to the end of the world. The very same things that I do, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Same kind of work. And today the church of the living God has the privilege of standing and seeing the conquering, resurrected Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, standing present, living in His church, doing the same thing He did in. And we possess the gate of every enemy. If you've got an enemy this morning, then, my brother, there's only, if you are a seed of Abraham, after hearing this, there's not enough devils in hell can keep that gate before you. 
It'll open. I don't care what it is. You walk up there as a promised seed. Say, I claim this for mine. This is mine because God swore that He'd raise up Jesus and through Jesus I'd conquer it. I come in the name of that conqueror, Jesus Christ. Step back, I'm passing through. Hallelujah. Amen. He shall possess the gate of the enemy and then stand up there with your shoulders back and your shield is shining, covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus. The enemy will recognize him. If you have need, talk to him now while we pray. You in here this morning while you have your heads bowed. And if you have a need, will you just raise your hand towards Jesus and just speak it in your heart. In your heart, say, Lord, you know my need. Now I have heard this morning, and that's the Bible, he shall possess the gate of the enemy. I'm coming to possess the gate. Maybe I have a temper. Maybe I need the Holy Spirit. Sin has bowed me down. I have need. But I'm coming to the gate now. I'm going to take it this morning. My gate. So give away. I'm coming through. Blessed Lord, you've seen all these hands. And you know this is your word, Lord. I've only quoted it. And brought down through the scriptures the characters of the Bible. Of how they subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness and quenched the fire, the violence of fire. And escaped the edge of the sword and stopped the mouths of lions. And all more over women received their dead back to life. And many things because you promised it. It's your promise. His seed. Your seed, Abraham, shall possess the gate of the enemy. And you keep your promise. Now give to them, Lord, the desire of their heart. May they go from here a different person. May they go knowing that they are, they are conquerors because that the royal seed conquered for them. The royal king, when he comes, born of a virgin, he conquered every enemy, even to death. So death itself cannot scare the seed of Abraham. We have the promise that we will inherit the earth and shall return again in a more glorious way, in a glorified body. As the last enemy is placed underfoot of the only and last child of God that shall come into the kingdom. If there are those with their hands up, Lord, that sinners, save them. Those that are backsliding, let them know they don't have to remain a backslider. He can possess that gate of backsliding. Maybe that one was a temper, a, a vulgar, dirty tongue, or lustful heart, or greedy one over money, or, or some filthy thing. Let them know that they can possess that gate. Maybe it's sickness, Lord, afflictions. They can possess that gate. For he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. We are conquerors this morning. Grant it, Lord. And besides all that, that great work that was did by him, yet he's with us. Yet he promised he would do it. A little while and the world won't see me no more, yet you'll see me. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the age. I pray, Father, that you'll make yourself known to each and every one this morning. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that to be true? Solemnly believe it to be the truth. Not one waver of doubt in your heart. Now just remember this. The working of the Holy Spirit is so simple that it confuses 
the intellectual mind. The most simple things that I've ever... I've seen the Holy Spirit do this. I'd say things that... Well, I wouldn't think about it being that way. If I had to use my own mind, I'd say, well, that couldn't be right. But it always is right. He does things just so simple. And He does things to make Himself known to His people. God is with His people. He's in the midst of His people. He loves them and He wants to do for them and to help them. And to just let them know not what He will do, but what He has done. He's already done it. It's yours. It belongs to you. It's a free gift from God, our Father, to His church. Now, how the intellectual mind will be so twisted up. Like in the days of Daniel and in the days of the Hebrew children and the many that we've talked about this morning. See, the great intellectual world in that day was just as hard to overcome as it is now. It's always been the enemy to their way of seeing and their modern science and things was just as complicated and things to the mind then as ours is today. See, it was the same thing. But there were those always who dared to stay there and say, God is right. God's word is true. And you, you don't have to conquer because he conquered. The only thing you have to do is just go up and take stand in the gate. Say, it's mine. This is mine. God gave it to me. My salvation, if I want the Holy Spirit, God gave it to me. Promises to me. Our children, all as far off, as many as the Lord shall call. That's why I stand just my ministry of this discernment and so forth. It'll soon end now. Or it'll always be there. But it'll soon end this because it's going to something greater. See, It's going on up. From taking a hold of the hand. Up to the discernment. And now she's fixing to make another one. See? See it? Watch it and know that it's true. See? I know it is the truth. And it'll go greater, higher, better. Sure. Why, he promised it. And what he promises, he does. He can't fail in his promise. And what is it? His ever-living presence with us. To let, it, let you know that he has taken the gate for you. He was a royal seed. No one could take those gates but him. Amen. All those back there were shadows of his coming. But when he come, it finished the whole fight. Amen. The fight was finished at Gethsemane and at Calvary. And now we just stand as conquerors. There's no fighting to do. We, the fight's over. We just own it. Amen. Abstract deed to it. A written guarantee by God our Father who raised His hands that I'll swear by myself Amen. that His seed shall possess the gate of the enemy. And there it is. It's already took. He was wounded for our transgressions. With His stripes we were healed. It's already done. It's finished work. We just possess it. And the works that I do shall you also. The King is with us this morning. Amen. His great blessings, the Holy Spirit moving over us to feel that glorious feeling to know that it's exactly with the, in line with the Word of God, it gives us such a wonderful consolation to know that, he, that God is our Father. Now, I believe, did he, did he give out prayer cards this morning? I told him if, if there wasn't no more than just the uh, tabernacle people, well, not give out any prayer cards, but if there, there was as many as 10, 15 people or something, the strangers in the gate, want to give out prayer cards so we could bring them up and pray for them. How many is a stranger with us this morning? Raise your hand. Oh, my, sure. There's a 15 or 20 of those. All right. We'll line up these prayer cards and bring them up to the platform. See, the reason I said about tabernacle people, they are here. This discernment, remember, I'm speaking this. The discernment will soon be to the end. There will be something so much greater and so much better just in the way. There was... I know, see, I look at two brothers now that are standing with me yesterday when that happened. See? And day before when it happened. And that's three times in a row now it's happened. A confirmation that it's right now at hand. See? It's fixing to take place. Now, Lord, thou art God, and we are your servants. We thank you for your word, for the Holy Spirit who has blessed our hearts. And now we're happy. We're sitting here. Knowing that we are conquerors, we already possess all the gates of the enemy. It has been given to us. We have the master key in our hand. 
the name of Jesus Christ shall unopen every gate of the enemy. Take this key, the key of the name of Jesus, and unopen every gate of the enemy that has you bound away from any promise. God, this morning we come in the name of Jesus with this key to open the gates for the sick and the afflicted. For it is written in His Word, In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And if they take up serpents or would drink any deadly thing, it should not harm them. They'll lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. We know those things are true. And grant this morning, Lord, that they will, the people will be able to see that through manifestation of the Word made flesh and dwelling among us, that He was wounded for our transgressions with His stripes, we were healed, and may they accept it and be healed this morning from all their sicknesses and diseases and troubles. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you play Teddy uh, uh, only quite and slowly, if you will? And uh, what? Would you start from one? Number one, prayer card, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever there is. All right. Would you just quietly, if you can, get up, come over this side. <laughs> About, let's see, number one, number two. Who has number one prayer card? Huh? Number two. All right, sir. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten. While they're making their way and taking their positions and standing, I'd like to ask the question to some of the rest of you. How many, is there any tabernacle people here that's sick? Tabernacle people. Raise up your hand. About five, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine hands. Is there anybody here in the tabernacle that is not here at the tabernacle? There's strangers with us. Though you might have come in after the service and didn't get a prayer card, will you raise your hand? Anybody that has a need of God, that's not, it's, it doesn't come to this tabernacle. Anybody here that's not members of this tabernacle and, and yet you're sick and don't have a prayer card, you won't be remembered in prayer, would you raise up your hand? Every person. All right. That's good. All right. Now, I'm going to ask if you be just as reverent as you can for just a, just a few minutes. And then we'll start right off and start. Now, let's see. How much room you got left there, Billy? All right. Is that got number 10 up there? I call one 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let them stand now. If they have. Number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let them stand. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like about two more. From one to fifteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh, wait a minute. I told him just to give prayer cards to people that wasn't with the tabernacle. That's right. Because it would be, see, discernment. People say, these people come to the tabernacle. Yeah, I tell you, how many's been here? Never been here before. Let's see your hands. Nobody's ever been in one of my meetings before. Now, all right, just a moment now, Brother Teddy. Now, I might say this, that all of you heard of the meetings, how it goes. So have you? All people's been in the meeting. See, when our Lord Jesus was here on earth, he did not claim to be a healer. He was the seed of Abraham, certainly. And he had the promise with him. He said he did nothing till the Father showed him. Is that right? And he said, I can do nothing till the Father shows me what to do. And he saw it by, not till the Father tells me, till the Father shows me. St. John five nineteen. What I see the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. Now when he... He come, we find out in the beginning of his ministry that after he was 
taken the, the seat of David, spiritually speaking, the, when the Holy Spirit came up on him at the baptism of John, and he became the anointed Messiah. Now remember, he was a son of God when he was born. He was God's virgin-born son. But when he became Messiah, that's when the Holy Spirit came on him. Because the Messiah means the anointed one. See? And he was the anointed one when the Holy Spirit came on him. You heard me preach on the lamb and dove. Then we find out when he, after his 40 days of temptation, he came out. And how did his ministry start? And how did it finish? We find that in his ministry that there was a man by the name of Andrew that went and found his brother, Simon, a fisherman, and brought him to Jesus. And Jesus told him, said, uh, Your name is Simon. Your father's name is Jonas. From henceforth you'll be called Peter, which means little stone. You remember that? And this fellow was so astonished at what Jesus told him. Now, was the Messiah supposed to do that? How many knows that say amen? He was to be the God prophet. Yes, sir. Moses said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like an unto me. It shall come to pass that who will not hear this prophet shall be cut off from amongst the people. Now, then when we find out later on, he, was, he came to his own. Who were those? The Jews by nature. And so his own received him not. So he had them. Now it has to go with the Gentiles. See, because his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave he the power to become sons of God. So now he's turned to the Gentiles and has been for 2,000 years. But now notice the things that he did. Then Philip, after he's seen this done, he went and found Nathanael and told Nathanael who he had found and what he had done. And that astonished him. He couldn't hardly believe it. But when he got in the presence of the Lord Jesus, when he found where he was, come up into his presence, Jesus said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Now, if you'd have been standing there, do you think you'd have been spiritual enough to have understood who that was? You think you would have done it? Now, what? See? That man is a stranger. A fi- there he might have been a fisherman. He's a carpenter is what he was. This carpenter man standing there, a middle-aged man. And up come this man. He looked at him like one of these men here and said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there's no guile. Well, how did he know he was an Israelite? Not the way he dressed, because he all dressed alike. In whom there's no guile. How did he know that he was a, a guileless man? So it astonished this man, being a real believer. He said, Rabbi, or a brother, preacher, teacher, when did you ever see me? See, he's questioning. He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, you're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. Jesus said, because I told you this, now you believe me. Now you'll see greater things than this. And that's the reason I believe that the church of the living God is going to see a greater thing than this. It's fixing to step right into it now, shortly. See, because they have believed it. Those who have rejected it because of denominational barriers, I doubt whether they'll ever believe anything. See, things, you'll either walk in light or be blind. Light blinds or either shows a path. Little birds I found at the Statue of Liberty. Be sure to see that, Brother Toms, when you go up. See? They'd beat their brains out against her. And I said, what was the matter? said, instead of following the light in the storm to safety, they tried to beat the light out to kill themselves. That's the only thing that happens. When you beat against light, you kill yourself. Seriously. Just walk in the light as he is in the light. Then we'll have fellowship one with another. All churches will believe and go on and enjoy the blessings of God. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Look at the Samaritan woman when she comes. She was a Samaritan now, not a Jew, a Samaritan. And he said, um, bring me a drink. And the conversation went on. This is for the newcomers now. And conversation went on. Now, she didn't know him being no Messiah. He's just a, a man, a Jew. See how she said first? She said, well, it's not customary for you Jews to talk to a Samaritan woman like this. She said, we have no dealings with one another. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And I'd bring you, give you water. You don't come here to draw why, well, she said, now, just a minute. She said, we worship in this mountain, and, and you Jews worship at Jerusalem. Jesus said, but the hour is coming when, the, when you'll neither worship at Jerusalem or this mountain, but in the Spirit. For God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. See? 
Well, he went on and carried the conversation until he found out where her trouble was. What, you know where her trouble was? Anybody know what was married to the woman at the well? She had too many husbands, didn't she? So he said to her, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. I said, that's right, you've got five. And the one you're now living with is not yours. She said, sir, now watch her. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. If you run that Marjorie reading back, you'll find out, sir, in the original, thou art, I perceive that thou art that prophet. Remember in the Bible, it keeps saying, that prophet, are you that prophet? What prophet was it? The one that Moses said would raise up. I perceive that you are a prophet. Now, we are taught, and we know, when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. That was a sign of the Messiah. Is that right? Amen. To know what her trouble was. said, we know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. She left her water pot. She ran into the city, I imagine, just holding her heart. And saying, holding her hands on her bosom, just jumping. Saying, come see a man. Who told me the things that I did? Isn't this the very Messiah? Isn't that the very one that the Bible said that would come? It's a Jew sitting out there, just an ordinary man. Looked like a carpenter. But he told me that I had five husbands, and you all know that's the truth. This has got to be the Messiah. Is that right? Now, Jesus said a little while, a little space of time, the world won't see me no more. Yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you, even in you. And the works that I do, shall you do also? Even more than I've done here, shall you do. For I go unto the Father, return back in the form of the Spirit. The sacrifice is paid. The royal seed died. The royal seed rose again. Now the church stands justified by believing that. And the royal seed can come into these people and even make them joint heirs, sons and daughters of God. Amen. Now, to the rest of you out there that's not in this prayer line, I told him to just give cards to the people. That When I called him this morning, he had called me and said, you want to go and get us some cards, Daddy? I said, if there's as many as ten people, that's out of the tabernacle. Now, sometimes in the tabernacle, I call and give them prayer cards. You come back and say, well, he knew them. They were from the tabernacle. He knew their condition. Sure. Now, I turn around. I say, just those out of the tabernacle come. All right? You without the tabernacle. You will be the one that gets in the prayer line. Oh, we didn't know them, said the tabernacle. We don't know what their trouble is. He might have been lying about it, see? <laughs> then I say, nobody come. Let the Holy Spirit just pick out those that's in here that's not from the tabernacle. Just sitting out there. Still, you just there's no way at all of getting a man to God unless he's predestinated to be a son of God. Amen. There's just no way of doing it. Uh, Jesus said, no man can come to me except my Father draws him, and that's the truth. Amen. Everything he did, there's something contrary. If he did it this way, it was supposed to be this way, and this way is supposed to be back that way. See, it's just unbelief. Amen. But wisdom is justified by her children. So you you see. Now here, I'm trying to say to, to this congregation of people this, that Jesus Christ was that royal seed. It's not us. It's him. We are just heirs of that. But all things are ours. What if you just stood there that day when Simon come up? And you, nobody. This is the first thing he ever done. Now, that'll be the first thing for these people if he does it. They've never seen it before. But when Simon come up, an old fisherman, not enough education to sign his name to a piece of paper. The Bible said he was ignorant and unlearned. And a conjunction. Both ignorant and unlearned. And then when he walked up and forced Jesus, Jesus said, Your name is Simon. What do you think he thought? What would you have thought if you'd been standing there? And your father's name is Jonas. And from henceforth you'll be called Peter. What, what would you have thought? Was a man reading his mind? Well, what would you thought? Would you thought that was the sign of the Messiah? If that's the sign of the Messiah in one age, it's got to be the sign of the Messiah. Second age, third age, fourth age. Every age has got to be the same because God cannot change. And how many knows the Messiah was God? Sure, it was the anointed. Sure. So he can't change. He has to be the same. That's the reason he had to witness the same thing to the Samaritans that he did to the Jews. Because the three nationalities of people are Ham, Sham, and Japheth people. 
Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Now, you know it's the Holy Ghost? How many knows Peter had the keys to the kingdom? Do you notice he opened it at the day of Pentecost to the Jews? Philip went out and preached to the Samaritans and baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ, but the Holy Ghost hadn't come up on them yet. They had to stand and get Peter, who laid his hands up on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Is that right? And the house of Cornelius, the, the Gentiles received it. That was all of it. From that on, he just opened all now. So there you are. See, he had to open. God has ways of doing things. Now, this morning, if this one who gave the promise to the seed, and if the seed is sitting here, I want to believe every one of you are. If the seed is sitting here, surely the seed will see the promise. Now, each one of these people standing here has raised up their hands. They've never even been in the meetings before. They're strangers to me. I don't know one of them. They just come in here and a few minutes ago. Uh, Billy, give them a prayer card, and here they are standing here. There's a lot of you out there that raised up your hands that you didn't have prayer cards, and you were still strangers here. That don't have anything to do with it. You just believe that you're heir of that promise. Amen. You just believe that by His stripes you were healed, and believe that with all your heart, and watch Him. The only thing this gift is, is just submitting yourself to Him. I don't say nothing. He does the same. And if it's His spirit of prophecy... The prophet always had, thus saith the Lord, is always right. And no question of doctrine, because it'll have to line with the Bible if it's God. God can't say something and go back on it and twist it around. It has to be the same thing all the time. Now, you out there, you believe with all that's in you, you believe. Now, don't move around no more. Just sit real still now, everybody. Just as slowly and softly as you can. It happens to be this morning that the first person standing here is a man. Now, we're going to take this scripture. Now, do you see where I'm standing? How many can understand that? Here's men and women standing here that I've never laid eyes on in my life. They've never even been in a meeting. And you see where they're standing. They don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. But God promised it. Abraham didn't know what was going to happen when he took the knife out to kill Isaac. But God promised him. That settled it. He would received him as one from the dead, knowing he was able to raise him up from the dead. Is that right? Amen. So that settled it. Now, here stands the man by me. I've never seen him, know nothing about him. We're strangers to one another. We do not know each other. God knows both of us. Now, by divine gift, if I can just by gifted. Now, those gifts are born in you. God predestinated before the foundation of the world. How many know that? Amen. So it wouldn't be anything I'd had to take the gift. God just chose that. I never chose that. He chose that. See? Like the prophets of the Old Testament and the different people, they were predestinated to do it. To do this. Now, if the man is sick, I couldn't heal him. If the man in need... It would depend on what he needed, whether I could help him or not. It might be if it was something other like the, a little something I could help him to, I, I'd be glad to do it. Maybe he's got a temper. Maybe he's not even a Christian. Maybe he is a Christian. Maybe he's an imposter. I don't know. What if he's just a sneak attack? One has slipped in to come up here and just making himself out like something. Watch what happens. See? Just, just see what takes place. I don't know. But see, you stand here, then you can stand perfectly, knowing that God made a promise. God keeps His promise. Now, if God keeps His promise between right here now to these people, how many out there is going to sit out there, and with all your heart, you're going to believe it? All your heart, you're going to believe it, and you just believe it. Now, let's see, let's take a scripture. Now, Simon Peter came to the Lord Jesus, and upon... Arriving at the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus told him who he was. And, uh, and it told him things about his life. Well, the same Jesus lives today. He, do you believe he raised from the dead? Do you believe that Messiah spirit lives right in the church today, just the same as it always did? All right. Now, you in the audience that doesn't have a prayer card, you look this way and say, Lord, well, of course, there's no prayer cards in the audience. I've got them all standing here. You in the audience say, Lord, you touch me. Find out what happened. 
Now, sir, if there was a way in the world of helping you, I'd do it. See, I'm just, we're just strangers here, and I, I'll meet you for my first time. But I'm responsible as a minister to tell the truth and to be a witness of Jesus Christ. And now, I don't want you to tell me anything. I just want you to answer me whether it's truth or not. And then let him do it. And if he will perform the same way here at the platform through this body that he did through the Jesus' body, that's God in Christ. Jesus said, I do nothing till the Father which is in me shows me. He tells me what to do. So it wasn't Jesus that told the woman. It's the Father in him told the woman. It was, wasn't Jesus that knew who Simon Peter was. It was the Father that dwelt in him knew who Simon Peter was. That's it. See? That's it. I can tell you now you're a Christian. Yes, sir, because you have a, a, a welcome spirit vibrating warmly. And he, he's a believer. He's a Christian. And you're suffering from a nervous condition which gives you a stomach trouble. Is that right? Uh, that's right. Uh, how did that, how'd I know that? How in the world would I ever know that? We've never seen one another before. That's true, isn't it? Maybe you'll tell you something else about yourself. Well, I'll tell you. Here's something. I see a woman by you. She's with you. It's your wife. She's also needing some help, too. That's right. Yes, sir. You believe God can tell me here what's wrong with your wife? I know it can. All right, sir. You got heart trouble, complications. That's right, isn't it? Nervous also. Yes, sir. Now, you're not from this city. You go back this way when you go home. Going to Cincinnati. That's right. You're from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes, sir. Your name is Milliken. Return, go back home, get well. The Lord will bless you and you'll be healed. You and your wife, God bless you. Come, sir. You believe? Now, just have faith. Don't doubt. Now, be real reverent. Everybody, now, just be real reverent. Keep this quiet. See, the Holy Spirit is so timid. How many knows that? Just real timid, Holy Spirit. Just any little interruption bothers you. According to the doctors, you must die right away for the heart trouble. You come here from Chicago. Mr. Mosley, your first name's Theodore. You believe God? Yes. Then go home and live. In the name of Jesus Christ, be well. You believe God? You suffer with the condition of your leg. You're from out of town, too? You're from Owensboro, Kentucky. Your name's Miss Lamb. Go back home and get well. The lady sitting right there also from Owensboro. Got an abscess on your breast here. Supposed to be operated on tomorrow. Go believe and live. You believe, sir? We're strangers to one another. Her name's Mr. Gilmore. That's right. You come from Anderson, Indiana, where the great Church of God movement is. That's right. You're standing here for your partial afflicted daughter. She's partially paralyzed. You believe? Then go home and find her the way you believe. Your name, Jesus. Oh, have faith, believe. Her. You believe with all your heart, sir? You're from Indianapolis. You're a minister of the gospel. That's your wife. She's suffering also. She's got the esophagus trouble. The esophagus, the doctor has heart trouble. A little nervous. I see she's deaf in her ear. Come here. Thank you. Thou deaf spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I charge thee by the living God, come out of the woman. Now you hear me all right now. You can both go home and be well. Run back to your home. You hear me? You're well. You'll be okay. You believe with all your heart? Just have faith in God. Believe. That old arthritis and stuff's off a bad thing. You believe God will make you well? You walk right down through there, go home, praise His name, and thank you, dear Lord Jesus. 
The reason I caught that so quick, this woman had the same thing. Arthur Ida says, you believe that God will make you well? All right, church, they just walk right down through there and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and go home. All right, sister, just turn and go back and believe you're stiff in your knees, you're in your heart, trouble, and so forth. Just turn and go back home and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and get well. Believe with all that's in you. You believe? How about out there, some of you people? You believe? Little lady sitting there, black-headed, having epilepsy. You believe that God will make you well? You accept it? All right, if you will, he'll do it. Here sits a preacher sitting here. Wanting a closer walk with God, aren't you, sir? You believe God will do it for you? Raise up your hand and say, I accept it. This lady's thing, you're throwing her hand down. She's got spiritual trouble she's thinking about. That's right. Here's a little lady here wondering if she's going to have her baby. That's right. You've been in one of my meetings. I promised you by God a baby, didn't I? All right. And go home and have it. Don't worry about it. You believe with all your heart, all of you? Every one of you believe? The seed of Abraham shall possess the gate. The gate of the enemy. Are you the seed of Abraham by Jesus Christ? Raise up your hands if you are. Then lay your hands on your neighbor. On your neighbor. On one another. Lay your hands on one another. Possess the gate now. It's yours. It belongs to you. Prayer and faith shall save the sick. God shall raise them up. All right. Pray in your own way. Pray the way you do at your church. Pray for the people that's with you now. Just put your hands on one another and pray. Lord Jesus, we come in that great almighty name of the royal seed, the seed of Abraham who was promised him on the mountain where you provided a lamb and put that lamb in the wilderness, a mysterious thing, the same as you did those squirrels yesterday. I pray, O oh Lord God, that you'll send power of faith. Let every seed, I know they will, Lord, because you said the seed of Abraham. And if there has been some here who has been pretending to be the seed and is not the seed, forgive them for their intending or, or pretending. And may the Holy Ghost just now set their soul afire with living faith. Let the Holy Ghost sway into every heart and heal everybody here. They got their hands on one another. The royal seed said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And the one who made the promise is present right now, showing himself that he's here. There's the seed with their hands on one another. These signs shall follow them that believe. May the Holy Spirit surge through every one of their hands into the hearts of the people, into the bodies, and heal everyone that's in divine presence. Grant it, Lord. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke all unbelief. I rebuke every foul spirit. I rebuke every pretender. I rebuke everything that's contrary to God's Word. And let the Holy Ghost take His place in the heart of the people right now through faith. May every sickness and every disease, every affliction, leave the people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thou seed of Abraham, you are the royal lineage. You are the promise. By the grace and help of God, how many of you can raise your hand and say, I have received what I asked for? Thank you. That's it. That's what the promise is for. That's what the promise is given for. That you might be an heir of all things through Jesus Christ who saved you. Amen. He saved you from sin. He saved you from sickness. He saved you from death. He saved you from hell. He saved you from the grave. Amen. You say, Brother Brandon, but we all go into the grave, but the grave can't hold us. Amen. He went to it also, but it couldn't hold him. Certainly you can't hold him. Well, Brother Branham, I'm so tempted. He was too. But he saved you from temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. He did it. It's all yours. Everything is yours through Jesus Christ. He gives you everything freely. There's no pay to it or nothing. It's just yours right now. Aren't you glad of it? Aren't you happy for him? Thanks be to God. 
Now, there'll be services this, uh, tonight. It's tonight. 7.30 tonight. I'll let the pastor tell you. Come on. Come on. Amen. Now, next Sunday morning, the good Lord willing, I'll be back to pray for the sick at the tabernacle or wherever.